In this lesson, we will continue where we stopped in the last video. We are busy exploring date and time values with the t-date-time data type. We already added the t-timer component to our project to refresh the current time in a label here on the top of the form. The t-timer executes code every second to refresh the seconds in the label. If you did the previous lesson with me, you must open the project you saved last time. If you are new here, you can download the start and solution projects from my Patreon page at patreon.com slash learndelphi. After downloading the starter project, open it in your copy of Delphi. For the new guys, I'm using a free download of Delphi 10.3 Community Edition to record these lessons. You may also still be in time to download your free copy. I posted the links to the download site and my Patreon page in this video's description. Open the starter project and let's go and finish the code for the project we started last time. Let's first run the uncompleted solution. When the form is created, the current time displays in the caption of this label, named LBL time. After one second, a t-timer component takes over and refreshes the time every second. Now we must write code to respond to changes the user makes with the calendar view. The user will select his birthday from the calendar, and these labels must show his birthday and age in years and months. Let's go to design view. I called the calendar view CAL My Calendar. You can search for the T Calendar View component here in the component palette. Or you can also look under the Windows 10 components in the component palette. Select the calendar view. Make sure the events tab is showing in the object inspector. Every time a user selects a date, the calendar's onChange event will be triggered. So we must write code for the onChange event. OnChange is also the default event of the calendar. So to link an event handler to the onChange event, we can just double click on the calendar on our form. The onChange event is now linked to a new event handler named CAL My Calendar Change. Go above begin and declare a few variables. Type var and on the next line DTE birthday as T date time. And on the next line SNGH in years comma SNGH in months as single. DTE birthday will store the selected date for us and the two single variables will store the age in months and years. When we get the time span between two dates to calculate years and months, the values are returned as doubles. But we don't need that kind of precision, so we can also store the results in single variables. Go between begin and end. Type three comments to separate input, processing and output. Go under input and type this code. The calendar allows us to select more than one date at a time. All the selected dates then go into a collection called selected dates. But the user only has one birthday, so we only want to get the first date that was selected. Just like with other collections, all the selected dates will receive an index number. The first date will be index number 0. So here we read the calendar's date with index 0 and assign it to the t-date-time variable named dte birth that we declared above the begin statement. Go to the next line and type this code. In the last lesson, we added system.dateUtils to the users clause at the top of our forms unit. The year span function is provided by system.dateUtils. Let's explore year span. Year span gets the number of years between two dates and return the result as a double. In other words, a floating point number. The integral part of the floating point number is the years and the decimal digits are the remaining fraction. With system.dateUtils, we also have the month span function to retrieve the number of months between two dates as a double value. You can even go more granular with day span, hour span, minute span, second span, and if you wish, you also have millisecond span. So here we use now, which retrieves the current date and DTE birthday as input parameters. Delphi will now calculate the number of years as well as the fraction if a year is not full yet and return it as a double. The result is then assigned to a single variable named SNGH in years. Although these functions yield doubles, I store them in single variables because we don't need the precision the double data type provides. Go to the next line and type this code. Here we do the same with the month span function. We calculate the months between two dates and assign the result to the single variable named SNGH in months. Go under output, type this code. Here, we read the value in DTE birthday and convert it to a string with the date to string function that we explored last time. Then we assign it to the caption of a label named LBL birthdate. 
Run the application again. Now select your birthday in the calendar. Click on the month's name to view the whole year. Then click on the year to view the whole decade. And click the up arrow to go a few decades back if you are as young as me. Notice your birthday in this label. In my project the dates are displayed in the format day, month, year. So this is the 8th of March 1970 and not August the 3rd 1970. That is because dates are displayed according to your original settings in Windows. Close the form and go back to your code. On the next line type this code. We first convert the single variable to a string with the float to string function. Then we assign it to the caption of the label named LBLH in years. Run the application again. Select your birthday from the calendar. The age in years display, but we don't want so many decimal digits. So let's fix that. Close your form. Change the float to string function to float to string f and add the parameter to use the ff fixed format and format the number to four significant digits with one decimal. Run again and select your birthday. That is perfect. I'm creating this video in January, so March is around the corner, so point 9 looks about right. Close your form. Type this. Here we do the same with the single variable that stores H in months, and we assign the formatted result to the caption of a label named LBLH in months. Run the application for a last time. Select your birthday again. Now the H also displays in months. I hope you had fun with this one. There's a lot more we can do with T-Date time. Save this project because we will use it again. Next time we will explore some of the ways we can process and display dates and times in other formats. Please subscribe to the channel and like and share my lessons. Thank you for watching this video and a special thank you to my supporters on Patreon. See you next time.